Once we have the idea of taking the derivative of a vector valued function, we can think about going the other way. What if we find an antiderivative? So what we do, if we, if we have the derivative um, of position, then we could find the position just by integrating. And let's see, our first component is t cubed plus 4t, so the antiderivative would be 1 fourth t to the fourth plus 2t squared plus some constant, I'll call it c1. The antiderivative of t would be 1 half t squared plus uh, some constant. And the antiderivative of 2t squared would be 2 thirds t cubed plus some constant, right? We have found the antiderivative of, um, of velocity, so we found our position function. But um, if we only know our velocity, then to find our position, we would have to know where we started. And that's what this initial data is for. So this gives us some initial uh, information, so some initial data. That will allow us to choose our constants, because according to what we just found by integrating, if we plug in 0 for t, that'll be 0, that'll be 0, so we'll just have c1. And um, this will be 0 plus c2, and this will be c3. But according to what we're told, that's supposed to be equal to 1i, 1j, and 0k. And so we can read off that c1 must be 1, c2 must be 1, and c3 must be 0. So now we found the actual position function. We don't have the constants anymore because we can replace them with their values. We have 1 quarter t to the fourth plus 2t squared plus 1, because we turned out c1 was 1, 1 half t squared plus c2, and 2 thirds t cubed. So we've started with our velocity and some initial data, and from that we're able to recover our position function. Let's do another one. This time we have the acceleration. We have the second derivative of position. So we can start by turning the acceleration into velocity by integrating. The antiderivative of t is 1 half t squared plus t times i. The antiderivative of 1j would just be t, and the antiderivative of negative k would be negative 1 half, or negative t would be negative 1 half t squared times k. Oops, when you integrate, there could always be an arbitrary constant, so I, f I need to add in c1, c2, and c3. So this would be the general antiderivative of this. But I have some initial data, some initial information about the velocity. Initially, when t is 0, the velocity is i plus j plus k. So, but from what I've just found, the velocity at time 0 is c1, c2, and c3. Just plugging in 0 for t here. Turned out, in this case, everything disappeared except for, except for the constants. Comparing that to what we have, which is i, j, k, the vector 1, 1, 1, we can read off that c1 is 1, c2 is 1, and c3 is 1. So now we have the velocity is 1 half t squared plus t plus 1, and t plus 1, and negative 1 half t squared plus 1. So we found our exact position function, or exact velocity. Now, to get um, our position, we need to integrate one more time. So the integral of 1 half t squared would be 1 third, um, t, let's see, 1 sixth t cubed, right? So the 3 comes down and leaves 1 half. Antiderivative of t would be 1 half t squared, and the antiderivative of 1 would be t plus some constant. Maybe I'll call it d1, since I already use c1 up here. Ooh, that's a little messy. These are plus signs. OK, antiderivative of t would be 1 half t squared. Antiderivative of 1 would be t plus some constant. I'll call it d2. Antiderivative of negative 1 half t squared squared would be negative 1 sixth t cubed. The antiderivative of t, uh, 1 would be t. And then a third constant, d3. Now I can figure out what these constants are because I have some initial data about the position. According to what I just found by integrating, when t is 0, this disappears, this disappears, this disappears, and all you're left with is d1. Um, when t is 0, the second entry is d2. And when t is 0, the, the third entry is d3. But we're told that when t is 0, this is supposed to be 1, 3, 2. So we can read off what d1, d2, and d3 are by comparison here. And that allows us to find the specific position function that applies in our case with our given initial velocity and initial position. So we have 1 sixth t cubed plus 1 half t squared 
plus t plus 1. That's my x coordinate. And then I have 1 half t squared plus t plus d2, which turned out to be 3, and minus 1 sixth t cubed plus t plus d3, which turned out to be 2. There's my position function.